Hello Kitty. In the last video, we talked about the difference between showing and telling. And we likened our comic book project to a real person we've met, or a child that we raised into adulthood, so that we learn to appreciate both its strengths and its weaknesses. Now let's do a recap of the seven steps we took to complete this big book project, and the problems we had to solve under each. 1. Storytelling First, we had to learn how to tell a story for comic books. In the past, I tried writing an outline to get started, but after several attempts, I noticed it wasn't working out for me. A story outline couldn't provide me with a lasting stimulus to complete a project, so I tried a different approach by writing a complete story instead of an outline of a story. But first, I needed to solve this problem. How do I get started? on writing a story. This is where I found a solution, through speech. Not on a keyboard, not with pen and paper. I tell a story out loud to myself, usually when it's just me in the room, but I like to imagine there's a smart kid listening to me. And in the same way we tell stories to our friends over drinks, I make sure I use visual language, and I make sure I use sixth grade vocabulary, because there's no need to show off. We're just telling a story. Now once I get the story going with momentum, I then start writing down my spoken words in the computer until I reach an ending. But sometimes I get stuck in the middle. When that happens, I just lift my hands off the keyboard and I resume telling the story out loud again until I regain that momentum. And then I can return to the computer to write it all down. Once the story is complete, we now have a written narrative that can stand alone on its own. This is different from a story outline. An outline contains a lot of gaps in between key points of the story. This means we still have to complete the story at a later stage. I don't know, Kitty. That sounds kind of like running away from finishing our homework. Now with a written narrative, we actually have a completed story. So this frees us up to start focusing on creating the visuals next. But before we start sketching anything, now is the best time to send our first story draft to a few close friends for some initial feedback. Asking for this early feedback will help us get a better sense of direction. You see, Kitty, the whole time I've been composing this story for our big book project, I've been inside a bubble, writing alone, Thinking on my own, that's a bubble. I need that bubble to burst as soon as possible, so that I can minimize pitfalls where I didn't see them. And now is the best time to do it, because it's easier to see blind spots and improve on things when I still haven't used up a lot of my time and energy. Getting feedback now is more useful than getting it after I've poured a lot of effort in creating the comic book, because by that time, the journey is over. I'd be so content already and wouldn't be so receptive because my mind would be focused on other things. Once we've got our feedback, we can use it to improve our written story in those areas where we initially had blind spots. This will increase our confidence in our story. And also, because stories are the way that we transmit information that we don't yet understand, we can also use this early feedback to better understand our story. 2. Character Design The next step is drawing the characters that will appear in our completed story. The problem we need to solve here is how do we decide on the look of each character? This was my mistake in the past when I drew characters based on how I felt like drawing on a given day. I ended up with characters that were interesting to look at but they were also a lot of effort to draw over and over again. Comic book panels are a form of sequential art, wherein we have to draw the same characters repeatedly in several different angles. This means I would need to be more deliberate in my character design. It has to be both easy to draw and fun to draw over and over again. Coming up with something easy to draw is easy, but if it's too easy, it can be quite boring to draw, and then we would risk losing interest in drawing our characters. So we have to come up with something that is also 
fun to draw. Here's how we know if we've created something that's fun to draw. It's when we can't stop admiring our own drawing. I mentioned this last time. Creating a comic book has some parallels to raising a child into adulthood. We want the outcome to look pleasing, interesting, inspiring awe, and impossible to ignore. When we get to combine both easy to draw and fun to draw in our character designs, it will increase the likelihood of us completing our big book project. 3. Medium and Materials After fleshing out our comic book characters, the next step, and the next problem to solve, is choosing a medium and gathering the materials. Our decision will depend on a couple of things. Our interest in using a particular art medium, and our access to the art materials. Both will need to be aligned. Most comic book creators nowadays refer to digital media repeatedly because that's where their interest lies and it's accessible to them. Here at Cat's Art School, I like to use this opportunity to learn a new medium, a medium I haven't yet tried using when illustrating comic books, a medium I'm not yet comfortable with because this will push us to solve problems problems that give us a reason to be creative. For this big book project, I've chosen a combination of dry media that includes colored pencils, charcoal, pastel, graphite, and three types of paper, white, black, and tone paper. After deciding on what media to use, I had to find the exact tools and brand to get from the store so that I can easily restock when I've used them up. I had to test it at first before purchasing to make sure the output matches what I'm looking for for a big book project. Then I had to come up with a color palette based on the colors available at the store to help me figure out which colors to purchase and how many pieces I should bring back to the studio. 4. On the drawings. Now that we're ready with our art tools, it's time to begin the longest part of the comic book creation process. It's time to create the underdrawings for each panel. This is the part I consider the hardest. It's where we create something out of nothing. The story is complete in our heads because of our written narrative, but we now have to create something physical that we can see and touch. So this gives us a recurring problem to solve. How should we illustrate what's happening in each panel? Here are the two things I use to help me figure it out. Reference photos and sticky notes. When I was much younger, I used to draw comic book panels based on my imagination. The problem with that is imagination is based on memory. Memory of what I've seen, heard, or experienced. And memory is filled with blind spots. We only remember the gist of things. Drawing from imagination is like remembering a dream or having tunnel vision. We can't see the whole picture. We can't observe the nuances, like in the way light reflects or casts shadows on objects. To notice this, we need the real thing right there in front of us. This is why a reference photo comes in handy. It gives us real world information on how a scene can be drawn effectively. The drawing doesn't have to look realistic for it to be convincing. It just needs to show a few details that look familiar in the real world. I often gather a selection of reference photos for each scene, so I still need to narrow down my choices to the one that fits inside the comic book panel. This is where sticky notes can help fast forward our thinking process. By blocking in the text balloons on a blank paper, I now have a visual anchor to help me fit an image in the surrounding white space. Creating the underdrawings for a comic book with over a hundred pages is going to take weeks and weeks. When we have a long period to finish a project, it's highly likely we'll encounter other work, other responsibilities, or surprises that interrupt our momentum momentarily or routinely. So on top of solving how to illustrate each comic book panel, 
We also need to solve the problem of how to keep the momentum going when we are faced with interruptions that are outside of our control. The solution I found is to stop focusing on completing the big book project. I stopped treating our big project as a goal. Instead, I looked at it in its smaller components so that my to-do list is filled with an item that I can easily cross out on a daily basis. That to-do item could be to pencil two pages per day. Two is a number that is most doable on a daily basis. This makes it possible to work on our big book project with minimal breaks and avoid that disconnect between our mood and the storytelling atmosphere of the book. I started my underdrawings in July and finished them in December of 2019, but the actual work was done within the span of four months. I encountered a lot of interruptions. Some were expected, some I wasn't prepared for. Now this is where the work we did during storytelling and character design come to save us. Because we have a written narrative that can stand alone on its own, we can accurately calculate how many remaining pages we have to illustrate. This provides us with a sense of certainty amidst the uncertainty of when the next interruption will occur. And because we created easy to draw and fun to draw characters, we are far from feeling tired or bored of drawing. We are actually looking forward to finishing all the underdrawings. 5. Coloring Now this is the stage I look forward to the most. While it feels like completing a thick coloring book, during this stage we also encounter problems that are every bit as enjoyable to solve. Problems like how to color a sunset, how to draw trees with a painterly manner, how to create textures from nature with pencil strokes, how to draw on toned paper, how to draw on black paper, how am I supposed to sharpen this crayon, and plenty more. The solution to each comes intuitively through our hands-on process. We can make use of our sketchbook or scratch paper to try out different ways to color a scene and see which technique looks the best. This is where we discover what makes our chosen media so good and learn to appreciate its limitations. The coloring stage feels like a treat, a reward, a walk in the park. It only took me about two weeks to finish coloring all the underdrawings. Time flies when you're having fun. 6. Lettering The next step is to add a text. We did this using a pencil and a tracing paper for proofreading before adding the text in the computer. The problem we need to solve in this stage is deciding on what words to carry over from our written story to our illustrated panels. A lot of the words used in our written narrative were describing the scene, so those words don't need to appear on the illustrations unless we're trying to emphasize a point. This is where we apply the writer's advice, show, don't tell. In comic books, this is easy to achieve. The panel illustrations have no other purpose than to show what's going on. The trick is to complement it with words that add more meaning to what's going on, or words that serve as a bridge connecting one panel to the next. 7. Print-ready manuscript After adding the text, the last step of the process is to prepare the manuscript for printing. This might be a problem for those who are not yet familiar with using publishing softwares to design a book layout, in which case you'll need to find a third party who can do this for you. But if you already know how to use publishing softwares, this shouldn't be difficult to do. Any problems we'll encounter during this stage will be straightforward and solvable by just gathering all the technical requirements from our chosen printer, such as margins, bleeds, and file format. Alright, that was a blast. I hope you enjoyed following the progress in completing this big book project. I'll come back with some final words in the next video. Please go and enjoy your day, and I'll talk to you soon.